The most common lab injuries are cuts from broken glass, especially glass tubing. A typical accident comes from using too much force to push a tube through the hole in the stopper. One way to avoid this kind of accident is to use an inserter. First dip the Teflon tip in a glass lubricant such as glycerin. Then push it through the stopper. Remove the tip and slide the tubing through the hollow inserter shaft. Removing the shaft leaves the tubing behind. Make sure to wash the lubricant off the tubing and stopper before using them. And replace the Teflon tip so it doesn't get lost. To remove the tubing, take out the tip and lubricate the end of the hollow shaft. Push it through the stopper hole around the tubing. Then slide the tubing out through the shaft and remove the inserter. Remember to wash the lubricant off before returning the stopper and tubing to storage. And don't forget to replace the tip. If you don't have an inserter, lubricate the tubing instead and protect your hands with leather gloves. Push the tubing gently through, rotate it if there's any resistance. Use the same care when removing it and don't forget to wash off the lubricant. Use an inserter to place glass tubing in a stopper or remove it or lubricate the tubing and protect your hands with leather gloves. A centrifuge spins mixtures around in test tubes to separate solids from liquids. The solids move out toward the bottom of the tubes and the liquid stays on top. When the test tubes inside aren't evenly distributed, the centrifuge is unbalanced. It vibrates like a washing machine with an unbalanced load. If the vibration is bad enough, it can fall off the bench top. To prevent vibration, a centrifuge must be balanced. If you're only centrifuging one test tube, place another one opposite it with an equal amount of water. Once the centrifuge is balanced, you can turn it on. When it's finished, turn it off. Then wait till it stops spinning on its own. Never try to stop a centrifuge with your hand. Place equally filled test tubes in a centrifuge to balance it. Don't try to stop the spinning with your hand. A safe lab session starts with proper clothes. You must wear clothing and equipment that will protect you from chemicals and flames, and at the same time, stay out of your way. For example, sleeves that are too loose can drag through a chemical puddle or knock things over. The wrong material is also dangerous, as this mannequin demonstrates. Fuzzy sweaters or filmy fabrics can easily catch on fire. Synthetics such as polyester melt when they burn and stick to the skin. The right kind of clothing includes sleeves and shirts that fit fairly close, but aren't too tight to restrict movement. And fabrics made of sturdy cotton or wool that won't melt and stick to your skin. A lab apron keeps most splashes off your clothes but you should still wear older clothes underneath in case any chemicals get past the apron. Legs are vulnerable to chemical splashes and broken glass if you drop something. So long pants, 
or a long skirt should be worn to protect them. Open shoes can't protect your feet from spills. Closed leather shoes are much better. And shoes made of cloth or woven material can absorb spills and hold harmful chemicals against your skin. Besides wearing the right clothes, there are other precautions you should take to avoid accidents. Tie up loose, long hair. It could knock something over or even catch fire. Remove rings and watches. They can trap corrosive chemicals against your skin, and the chemicals can damage your jewelry. Your eyes are the easiest to hurt and the most important to protect. Don't wear contact lenses in lab. They may trap chemical vapors against your eyes. If that happens, your eyelids may go into spasms that make it impossible to remove the lenses and wash out the chemical. Always wear goggles with side shields to completely protect your eyes, even if you're already wearing glasses. And finally, protect your hands. Never use bare hands with concentrated acids, bases, or other reactive chemicals, such as concentrated hydrogen peroxide. Your teacher will tell you what type of gloves to wear to work with these chemicals. With the right clothes and protective equipment, you can work with laboratory chemicals with confidence and safety. Don't wear extremely loose clothing. Fabrics should be sturdy and natural. Wear older clothes and cover them with a lab apron. Wear long pants or a long skirt to cover your legs. Wear closed leather shoes to protect your feet. Tie up long hair. Remove rings and watches. Take out contact lenses. Cover your eyes with goggles with side shields. Protect your hands with the right kind of gloves.